All right, our next exercise is exercise 11, and this one is a little more challenging because uh, it will require a little bit more code. Now, the logic itself is not that difficult, um, but getting everything lined up correctly uh, in, in terms of what steps of logic you'll take, uh, that's more of a challenge here. Um, clearly, there's going to be some loops in here um, because that's what the chapter's about, so you can count on that. And... Um, they will require you to use one of the built-in math functions, basically the randomizing uh, function, or, or method, I should say, um, to help us do some of it. And, of course, they give us the statement to do the work, so it's already there, so we don't have to figure that part out. So that's helpful. All right, so it says, Pickering Manufacturing Company randomly se selects one of its four factories to inspect each week. Write an application that determines which factory will be selected each week for the next 52 weeks. Use the math random function explained in Appendix D to generate a factory number between 1 and 4. You would use a statement similar to this, or actually exactly like this. This is the one that you'll want to use. Um, all right, so that that's probably the, the hardest part of the code, because if you didn't know how to do that, you wouldn't be able to make it work. Um, after each selection, display the factory to inspect. After the 52 selections are complete, display the percentage of inspections at each factory for the year. Run the application several times until you're confident that the factory selection is random. All right. Now, what I'm going to have us focus on initially is just to get this first little part uh, running. If we can get it to randomly select a factory, all the other stuff is going to be mechanical. So, I mean, coming up with um, how many times a certain one was picked and what the percentage is, that's just very simple math. So, let's just say, for example, we have um, four different factories. Um, we can identify each factory by number. So we can say factory one, two, three, and four. So that's pretty simple. And that's kind of the point of this. So we're going to randomly get a number between one and four. All right. So the randomizer runs, and if factory ends up being one, and then we just basically add to that total. So if factory is uh, factory one, we add one to the total for factory one. And then we should probably have some sort of a method for showing that we've selected it. So that, that would be the next uh, challenge. And given the fact that we're going to be doing it for 52 weeks, we're going to need a loop. So here's, here's my way of doing a little scratch work here. So I'm just going to bring up, up my notepad++. Plus plus. And we need a loop loop that runs 52 times. Okay, so that's the one thing. Um, each time it runs, so I'm going to indent, um, pick one of four factories randomly. So it's going to pick a number from one to four randomly. Then, depending if you spell it correctly, on which factory is chosen, keep a tally and display it. So let's say it picked factory number one. We might say something like uh, factory one Week one, uh, inspect factory one. Week two, inspect factory four. So not only is it going to display it, what it picked randomly, but it's also going to keep count. So the next time it does factory one, it will add one to a counter. So you see, see the logic there? And maybe a good way to do this is to break these down. So depending on which factory is chosen, 
I'd say display it would be the first thing. And tally it, so keep account of it. And when when if we can get this part to work, doing the percentages and stuff, piece of cake. All right. So let me see if I can get at least a little bit of a start on this. Um, we are running out of time here in class, so I won't have a chance to finish all the code. Uh, but maybe I can do that in a subsequent video when I get home on my vacation. No. Um, maybe during the weekend or tomorrow or something. Uh, all right, so uh, I'm copying the file name there. I've dropped that in here. Get rid of that period. We'll do a save as. There's inspections. All right, we are going to need a main method. Um, we can count on the fact that we're going to need a loop. We are probably going to need a number of different variables. I'm just trying to think of all of the ones in, in my head just based upon um, the things that we're doing. So when I'm looking at this, this clearly indicates to me that that's going to be a variable name. Okay. This is going to generate a number between 1 and 4. So... Factory is going to have to be an integer. So let's start there. So I'm going to create an integer called factory. And I'm not even going to give it a value right now. And we are also going to want to keep count, right? We have four different factories, and we want to keep count of each one of those. Um, so let's set up some variables to do that. So I'm going to say int, I don't know, count one. I, I'm going to preset it to zero since we're counting. And I'm going to do that three more times. So I'm going to do a little copy pasting. Oops. Change this to two, three, and four. So those are the, these are going to keep track. of the number of times each factory is chosen. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, for something like this, where I know it's going to run 52 times, I'm going to use a for loop. That, that's, you know, my approach to it. Um, the way to do that is to set up a counter in here. And what I'm going to do, which I think would make a lot of sense, is instead of giving it like a letter name, why don't I just call it what it is, which is this is for each week, right? Mm -hmm. So week one, we're going to start counting at week one, so we'll start counting at week one. And then we're going to say uh, while week... while week is um, less, less than or equal to 52, we'll run the loop, and then we'll increment once each time. So this loop here will run 52 times. Each time we go through that loop, we are going to use this formula. And isn't it great that they gave us the formula? Because otherwise you guys would have to figure that out too. And that'll be really the first thing I do inside the loop. Every time I run it, first thing I do is generate that random number to choose the factory. From there, all that we have to do is basically test which factory is, is being selected. So let's see if I can do this in the few minutes we have left. So I would say something like if factory, you know, keeping in mind that this factory is a number between 1 and 5. So if that is equivalent to factory 1, so that's my first example, 
what we're going to do is the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll say we'll do a system out print line. And then we will say week plus the week number. And then I'm putting a little statement, inspect factory space number. And then whatever factory happened to be, which is factory. And hopefully that makes sense. And also the other thing I'll put inside that if statement is we are going to add to our to our count for factory one. And you can do that in a number of different ways. What is really probably an easy way to do it is you can just do count one plus plus. And then we would close our if statement. Right? So the next challenge here is to write the series of if statements that it would take to account for each factory. So you could do something like if factory is 1, you have this output. If factory is 2, you have a different output, factory 3, factory 4. And you can do it with a series of if statements, or you can do if else, or you can actually do a switch statement if you wish. And unfortunately, we're out of time, so I can't complete the whole thing. But hopefully, this will give you enough uh, to work with. And uh, we'll continue next week.